I will say before we get started that this presentation is typically targeted towards someone that is pretty new to the Westchester Power understanding of what's going on. So we're lucky that we have Dan Welsh with us here today. He's the director of the Westchester Power Program. So for all you people that have very complicated questions and want to elevate the level of our presentation to energy expert, we can definitely do that today. So Okay, so we want to say thank you to everyone for joining us today for our conversations in clean energy, Westchester Power, your community energy program. I think with the recent power outages last week and for some people even stretching into this week, electricity is certainly on the mind, perhaps more than it normally is. When you're accidentally flipping the switch and the power's off, maybe you're thinking more, hey, where is this power coming from and why is it not being delivered to my home today? So we're going to get into what is Westchester Power, how can Westchester Power help me to lower my carbon footprint, and how can I participate in the program. So my name is Lauren Broyce, and I'm going to be working through the slides today with my colleague Carmen Santos. And as I mentioned, Dan Welsh, our director of Westchester Power, is also on the line. So we're going to be sharing slides for about 20-ish minutes or so. If you have any questions as we are doing the presentation, please put them in the chat. And then once we're done with the presentation, we'll look at the chat, go through the questions. And I think people can certainly unmute themselves and we can have a nice conversation with one another. This presentation is also being recorded so that we'll be able to post it on our municipality's websites. So if someone's coming to this later in the year, they'll have it as a reference point. Okay, so um, Sustainable Westchester is a nonprofit consortium of Westchester governments, and it's our goal to enable sustainability programming to help ensure a better future for our communities. And out of the 45 municipalities in Westchester County, 44 of them are members of Sustainable Westchester. And this is also including Westchester County itself as a member. Okay, and as I mentioned before today, we're mostly here to talk about Westchester Power, but we want you to know that Sustainable Westchester is our, um, we want this to be your one stop shop for all the sustainability questions that you may have. So we offer programs that help you with your community energy, including a community solar program that can help you to save 10% on your utility bill. We offer electrification solutions, including a heat smart program. So if you feel your house is drafty in the winter time, or perhaps your heating and cooling systems are aging out, we can certainly help with that. If you're looking for information about electric vehicles or moving your electric, your municipal electric fleet over to electric, your municipal fleet over to electric, we can help you. And we also offer zero waste programs. So if you ever have a sustainability question, Sustainable Westchester can answer it. So let's get into the presentation and Carmen is gonna tell us what is Westchester Power. Thank you, Lauren. So Westchester Power is our community um, energy program in a county established in 2016. We work with local municipalities to aggregate residents and small businesses to buy clean electricity as a group at competitive fixed rates. In doing so, we have a positive impact on the environment in our communities. So Croton, Ossining Town, Ossining Village, and Peekskill, and 23 other municipalities have chosen to participate in the program. If you live in Croton, Ossining, um, and Ossining Town and Village, which I will refer to now as just Ossining, um, or Peekskill, uh, then uh, you uh, may be among our 115,000 customers. Our residents and small businesses make up about one third of the county. There, there are two main parts to your electricity bill. There is the supply and distribution. Westchester Power takes care of the supply side. That is, um, we purchase electricity on, be on your behalf and we purchase clean electricity. And Con Ed, continues to take care of the distribution side. That is, they deliver power to your home, maintain the power grid, and send you your electricity bill. You end up having more energy choice, and through your participation in the program, you support clean energy. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep, okay. <laughs> so, we offer two supply options. Green supply, which is 100% renewable New York State hydropower. 
and basic supply, which is a mix of fossil fuels and renewable energy. We are happy to share that 24 municipalities, including Croton, Ossining, and Peekskill, have chosen green supply as their default energy option. Also, customers can switch between these supply options at any time. So if you have Con Ed and you live in Croton, Ossining, or Peekskill, or one of these other municipalities listed here, um, and your electricity supplier is Constellation, you are a Westchester Power customer. Thank you for participating in the program. Westchester Power has many great benefits. We are a community nonprofit approved by your municipality. We are not an energy service company or an ESCO. We do bet and work with ESCOs, and in this case, we work with Constellation for the Con Ed utility territory. So, um, as a resident or small business, you do not have to sign any contracts or pay any penalties or fees to enter or exit the program. Um, there are no surprises in your rates. We will notify you ahead of time of any price changes, such as for 2021, when your municipality hopefully will enter a new supply contract. We continuously provide customer service. You can reach us by phone or email. We do outreach in our communities like this presentation today um, to help our residents understand more about Westchester Power and clean energy. We warn residents about predatory ESCO contracts and help them read their electricity bill. And we provide resources in Spanish. Currently, we have fixed rates, which buffer us from the daily changing energy market. Savings cannot be guaranteed, but because of our large customer size, we secure competitive rates. But that's not all. The program is also great for our communities and Lauren will tell us more. Okay. So it looks like we have a lot of sustainability minded folks on the call today. So typically in the presentation, I'll be talking more about the importance of sustainability and explaining it. But for this group here, I think we can probably go a little light on that. So um, one of the biggest benefits of Westchester Power is that we're bringing access to affordable, clean, renewable power. And this is really important because for many decades, fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas have been major sources of electricity production. But burning carbon fossil fuels produces a large amount of greenhouse gases, which cause climate change and have harmful impacts on people's well-being and the environment. So accessing this renewable power is certainly helping to counteract the decades of fossil fuel electricity that we have been depending on. So we're seeing this local, realized locally in an improvement in air quality and also at the source of where the electricity is produced. And I think in current news with coronavirus and also a higher attention paid to environmental injustice communities, we can all deeply understand the, the importance that air quality plays in our life every day. And another benefit that Westchester Power brings is that we're boosting the green economy and helping to build more green jobs. Okay. And for those that are maybe not familiar, New York State has some really aggressive and actually nation leading goals in carbon reduction. We want to see 70% target of renewable energy reached by 2030 and zero emissions by 2040. So your participation in Westchester Power is helping to mitigate climate change and helping us to reach these goals. And basically we've got 10 years to get from our current level of 28% renewable energy across the entire New York State grid to 70%. So for each person that participates with Westchester Power, we're helping to increase that number. And in Westchester County, we've seen the benefits realized locally again, countywide, we're mitigating over 600, 660,000 metric tons of CO2 reduced since the program's inception in 2016, which equates to quite a lot of tree seedlings planted for 10 years and a significant amount of cars taken off the road for one year. Sometimes it's hard to quantify the reduction in emissions. So we try to put it in different ways for people to understand the, the great reduction that's been achieved. Okay. And additionally, Westchester Power is helping to lay the foundation for a clean energy future because it's helping us to expand community solar. And as I mentioned before, if you do not have solar panels on your home, 
you can participate within our community solar program and save 10% on your utility bill. So if you're interested in learning more, we can certainly talk more and help you get enrolled after this presentation. And we're also talking about the path to electrifying everything. And I think people on this call probably already understand this important concept of electrifying everything. We really want to move our homes that are typically powered by fossil fuels, including natural gas, oil, propane, to electrically powered appliances, such as an air source heat pump or a geothermal system. So that's taking our home energy use and putting it on the grid. We also wanna see people move away from gasoline powered cars towards electric vehicles. Again, getting more people onto the grid. But the crux of this is that our grid, our electrical grid is powered by 100% renewable energy. So if someone is participating in Westchester Power, you can essentially say that you are on the path towards electrifying everything and your electricity demand is 100% fossil fuel free. Okay, and just other things that we want people to know about, we do have a launch pad for groundbreaking solutions as enabled by Westchester Power. So we currently this summer are running a residential demand response program. This is a pilot program so that residents can help to reduce their energy usage during the peak hours of the day. We're helping with direct supply solutions by bringing more renewable supply to Westchester County. And we're also piloting new models. So at our headquarters, our sustainable Westchester headquarters in Mount Kisco, we are working on a solar panel to EV, sunshine to EV program. And more exciting news on our new models coming soon. Okay, so now Carmen is gonna help us to take a closer look into the community. And Carmen, can you take it away? Sure. So I want to say that we use past utility prices and we researched the energy market to set a rate price that your municipality approves of, which energy supply companies must offer or go below to supply us energy. Our current rates are lower than the average Con Edison supply rates over 12 months from July 2017 to July 2018. Crown, Osning, and peak scale residents and small businesses have 100% renewable energy at 7.96 cents per kilowatt hour as their default supply. A few uh, municipalities like Greenberg and Mount Kisco have chosen basic supply as their default option, which is at 7.71 cents per kilowatt hour. But remember, any resident can always change from um, basic supply to green supply at any point. So, in this graphic, you can see how our rates represented by the line co compare to the con ed rates represented by the blue bars. Please note that most of our customers have 100% renewable energy and that con ed supply is similar to what's available in the New York State grid, which is about 28% renewable energy. So since the start of 2019, ConEd has shown a slight advantage in their rates by about one to three cents. Through the life of Westchester Power Program, residents in Croton, Osening, and Peekskill have been behind, the con, uh, behind con Ed by about $8.85 to having saved about 1.77 um, cents um, for a green supply. Uh, they, uh, for basic supply, they've been behind Con Ed by about 9.7 cents to having saved about $5.19. And it's, and it's dollars. It's dollars. Oh, yeah, dollars. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Apologize for that. I just yeah. thought right here. <laughs> so um, there's a range in these numbers because some municipalities did not join Westchester Power. Um, since the start of the program in 2016. So we're not able to benefit from the savings we experienced during the first period of the program. So um, although uh, some participants saw modest savings, it is important to note that con ed rates vary with the market and cannot be predicted. Therefore, there is no guarantee that Westchester Power uh, fixed rates will provide savings versus con ed. 
But thanks to your participation in Westchester Power, we are proud to say that you've helped us secure one of the most economical green supplies in Westchester County. Uh, for a comparable term, a fixed rate and 100% renewable energy for Croton, Osning, and Peak Scale area, there are only two ener um, green energy choices in the New York State power to choose. Westchester Power's rate is about one cent less than the lowest price available on that site and two times less than the only other option. So over the life of the program, um, collectively, residents and small businesses in Westchester Power in, in the Con Ed territory, Croton, Osney, and Peekskill included, have saved about $4.2 million, but more importantly, have helped us mitigate 585,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. So Lauren, please remind us, how can residents and small businesses participate in Westchester Power? I can. <laughs> I'm trying to do two things at once. Lindsay sent me this great photo that we're going to share. And now I have to get back to the PowerPoint. So sorry. Of course, we have technical difficulties when our boss is on the line. Dan, you're making us nervous. <laughs> okay, you can see it again now, right? Or did I stop sharing my screen? Did you stop sharing the screen? We need some music for the intermission when I make. <laughs> okay, sorry you guys. I think we're back on track now, right? This looks good. Yeah, Carmen? Yep, so Lauren, please remind us how do uh, customers participate in Westchester Power? Okay, perfect. So as Carmen was saying before, just a quick reminder, you can tell if you're participating in the Westchester Power Program if you take a look at your Con Ed bill and you see the company Constellation New Energy Incorporated listed on your utility bill. Another qualifier is that you live in one of these municipalities that are members of the Westchester Power Program. And like we've said, Peekskill, Austin, and Croton are all members of Westchester Power. So if you have any questions about your enrollment, you're confused, or you just need some one on one advice, please give us a call at the number listed on the screen, or you can also email us, whatever is easier for you, and we'll be happy to help. Okay, so um, there are some changes coming up to the program that we just wanna review. As we mentioned before, in 2021, your municipality will be entering a new supply contract. There's no paperwork on your end needed. You'll be automatically enrolled into the new contract, and it's our goals that we'll be asking for two energy supplies, the green option and the basic supply, and we'll also remain committed to using New York State renewable energy resources. So over the next few months, you can expect to hear from Westchester Power and Sustainable Westchester. We'll be doing more presentations just like this, and if you're a member of a community group, you'd like to bring this information to them, please invite us to a meeting. We would love to give this presentation again, and we can make it shorter or longer, whatever you need for your meeting. We're also going to be sending out some notification letters that you can expect to see in the mail in early November. And those notification letters are going to let you know about our new supply contract. But again, you can just not have to worry about any additional paperwork. You will be remaining in the program. And the new program will start on January 1st, the new contract. So, if you're like me, you perhaps get a lot of paper mail from what seems to be energy companies or who even knows. So we just wanted to say very clearly that whenever you hear from Westchester Power, you should always look for the sustainable Westchester logo as well as your municipality seal. And if you have any questions, if you get something in the mail and you're unsure, just give us a call at the office and we can verify if it's a legitimate communication from us or not. So we definitely recognize that there is a lot of confusion in the marketplace and um, just give us a call if you're unsure is the best advice we can give and we do recognize there's a lot of phone calls and, and paper mail out there that can be confusing. And you know, it's one of our goals with Sustainable Westchester to make the Westchester Power Program easy for participants to use. So less confusion is better. 
So we're going to be taking some questions in just a moment, but we definitely want to say thank you for all the people that have been members of Westchester Power, helping to build a clean energy future. If you found this was a helpful presentation, we have a few more coming up next week on August 17th and 18th. Even if you don't live in these areas, feel free to register. I'm gonna drop the registration link in the chat. We also would love your feedback on this webinar. I'm going to put the link to the webinar in the chat box, but it should take you about five minutes to fill out and we would be really appreciative to hear your constructive feedback. And we really wouldn't be here if it wasn't without the amazing groundwork that was laid by so many wonderful sustainability groups in Croton, Austin, and Peekskill. And we're just so thankful for the amazing work that they've done and continue to do. It's so impressive and we're very lucky to have such great partners. So at this point in the call, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, we can hear some updates from the different sustainability groups on the call. So, um, Lindsay, do you want to kick it off? Sure. Um, and if you could all introduce yourself too, that would be helpful. Okay, well, my name is Lindsay Oden. I'm the chair of Croton's uh, Sustainability Committee, which is a chartered organization by the Village Board. Uh, we've been around for about 10, going into 11 years. Our most recent and very uh, happy uh, announcement is um, we have completed the production of um, 301 kilowatts. Can you get the picture? There it is. That's the 301 kilowatt uh, system that was just finished on the rooftop of our Department of Public Works garage and office. And um, that uh, uh, was held up for a while on construction because of COVID. But that um, is uh, substantially completed. The transformer was delivered about a month ago. It's going through shakedown right now. But the big news is we were able to get the entire 301 kilowatts subscribed just to Croton residents. And uh, to a significant portion of them, 17% were low to middle income, which is what we're aiming at. Uh, and um, we have uh, 53 subscribers now, and um, anybody else that wants to get in on it, we have two other community solar systems we're under developing right now, we are developing right now. One of which is for um, uh, the parking lot at Croton Landing Park, which is a, a waterfront park. That'll be, if we get it done the way we want, that'll be about uh, 480 kilowatts, a little bigger than this one here. And uh, the other one, which we uh, issued the request for information, we have 24 round possible bidders, uh, and, and we have issued the RFP, is the um, uh, system at the Croton Harmon uh, station, train station parking lot, which would be significantly larger, assuming it all goes ahead. That would be about three megawatts. Uh, we're looking to um, uh, work that uh, subscription initially for uh, many of the Croton small businesses that have been hit hard by COVID and give them a shot at the 10% before uh, opening it up to others. We have various other projects underway, but this is the biggie and we wanted to show it to you. And here we are very proud of that work. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. So keeping on with things happening in Croton on Hudson, Patty, are you available to unmute and give an update as well? Uh, yes, so um, yeah, I mean, great to piggyback on uh, Lindsay's point. Um, we are really, really delighted uh, that this project uh, went forward and uh, um, I think just some of the, the points of it being a uh, sustainability committee initiated project, uh, they really saw everything through on it. And, um, but I, I just wanna highlight a couple of the really positive aspects of this project. Um, of course, the residents of zip code 10520 are, are beneficiaries, which is really fantastic. Um, our local green business, Croton Energy Group uh, got the uh, subcontract to do the installation of the solar panels. So this is an example of a project where a local business uh, participated and was able to benefit and also contribute to the community. Um, there's also a beautiful uh, synergy going on where uh, many of you know Leo Wegman, uh, who was the founder and partner at the Croton Energy Group he was also, uh, I think, a founding executive director at uh, Sustainable Westchester. And uh, he's also uh, the president of Croton 100. And uh, Leo's group, uh, the Croton Energy Group, had a, uh, an arrangement where the, if they helped with the enrollment and if uh, people who enrolled in the program identified Croton Energy Group or Croton 100 as the organization um, that uh, they learned about the program from, Croton Energy Group would receive a, um, 
a small enrollment fee for that. And they are donating those fees to Croton 100 as a donation to our not-for-profit group. So this is uh, really a program where you know, the village benefits uh, because of the rent uh, that will be uh, received for the use of the roof on the, uh, on the public works building, Croton residents benefit, our Croton local green business benefits, and Croton 100 also benefits. So uh, we're extremely excited about this program and we would love to see it replicated in other communities. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to say about uh, the uh, community solar program. Um, two other quick updates. I um, would just encourage folks, if you're not familiar with uh, the Croton 100 uh, organization, please go to our website, croton100.org. Um, two things I really want to point out for you there. One is we have a blog where we do pretty much weekly um, blog posts where we touch on a very wide range of topics. Sometimes our campaigns like the community solar program. Um, and uh, we also hit on broader themed uh, climate topics. Um, so please check in on our blog. Uh, we do have a blog about the Community Solar Program, and we also have a blog about uh, Cure 100, which is an initiative Croton 100 is kicking off to, uh, we hope to scale and replicate the uh, model that we have developed for Croton 100 for many other communities. And uh, we've already had tremendous interest from uh, several communities. We've had Yorktown 100 launched. Uh, we're looking at a possibility of Ardsley 100 coming online shortly. We have um, Putnam 100, which was sustainable. Putnam uh, is now joining us. And um, tying in with the next round of community solar, I think some projects are going to be going up in Yorktown. And uh, <clears throat> so we look forward to working with Yorktown 100 um, as, as those projects get underway. Great. Such awesome stuff happening in, your, in the village. Um, do we have anybody from... Austining on the line? I don't think so, right? I have some updates from Victoria Garrity that I can just share very briefly. Um, she wanted everybody to know that the Village Environmental Advisory Council is focused on questions related to land use and they're really promoting native plants as well as urging us to strengthen wetlands production. And they also have a local law protecting wetlands being is coming up in a public hearing this fall. And they're all they're moving towards greening their municipal fleet as well. They have their first two electric vehicles in use for their building department staff. Very cool. Okay, and is there anyone from Peekskill on the line? No, I don't think so. Well, actually, I am. I, I apologize. Uh, this is Jessica Young, but I'm the city planner for Peekskill. Hi, Jessica. I'm gonna walk away and take a couple of phone calls, so I do apologize, if, but it sounds like you're giving a list of updates. But what um, what specifically can I update you on regarding the city of Peekskill's activities? Um, if there's any updates you want to share about just sustainability happenings or things you would want others in the communities to know about Peekskill going green, now is a good time to share it. Okay, great. So the the city of Peekskill participated, as uh, you've seen through the presentation, um, in the in the most previous go around of the CCA program and that's something that um, the city council will actually be voting on to continue with the memorandum of understanding at the 824 meeting. Um, but behind the scenes and a little a little more removed is uh, our conservation advisory council is very active, they're very enthusiastic and so as the city's liaison to that board, um, we've been working on quite a few initiatives but right now we're focused on tree preservation and reducing um, clear cutting on a lot of development projects that we're seeing come into the city. So we're trying to be a little bit more proactive in terms of preservation efforts. And then we're also looking to devise a planting program for street trees, sort of in tangent to the DRI proposal that um, we're hoping will be funded from the state regarding streetscaping improvements, trying to reduce the heat island effect and really providing just a more viable downtown um, and walkable location. So that's been happening. Um, we're also looking at food composting right now. Um, so we're gathering lots of information on that, reaching out to folks in the industry. 
um, to try to reduce our food waste and obviously reduce the tonnage that we're sending to wheel liberator. Um, and at some point would like to, you know, over the next maybe five years, really open that up and make sure we can get downtown restaurateurs to participate so that we can really have a better, um, I think, platform for not only waste reduction, but thinking and looking at our, our food sources um, and kind of that whole system. So, um, and we do have two actually uh, EV charging stations. We have one downtown, we have one at the riverfront. Um, I put those in about a year and a half ago uh, now. So um, hopefully in the future, we'll be looking to build upon that. So. Thank you very much for, for giving time to speak. I very much appreciate it. Sure, it's my favorite part of the Westchester Power Calls to hear from all the communities. It's, it's amazing what people are accomplishing. So turning back to the Westchester Power presentation, are there any questions that people had that perhaps we can provide some more clarification on? I have a question. Thank you both for the presentation. Uh, it's very informative. Um, I was uh, happy to be on the Peekskill City Council when we had uh, voted to approve this uh, measure back in, I guess it was 20, Jessica, was it 2018? 2018, 2017? yeah, 2018. exactly. And hi, Colin, how are you? <laughs> hi, Jessica, nice to see you. Um, and, uh, and I also see my friend Marie and Sarah uh, as well. Hi, Marie. So, um, you know, this is obviously, I mean, it's, something that, as you know, in Peekskill, we have uh, decided on, and I guess it's, it's coming up again for, uh, for renewal. So um, my question is, I guess, from the, from the county's perspective, um, I mean, is this, is this an initiative that you, uh, I mean, it sounds like it's, it's primarily the, 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 the local communities that you have to sort of go into and, you know, work with the, you know, the town boards to try and get um, you know, buy-in, uh, you know, to, to opt into the program or to, you know, to pass the, um, the, uh, the legislation to uh, opt into the program. Is, is there any, um, I mean, is there any county component to this? I mean, is there, and have you, have you, have you um, discussed or had any conversations with people at the, you know, at the county board or the county executive's office or, or anywhere? And, and, and if so, yeah, I say Dan, hi Dan. Yeah, I just volunteer <laughs> that, you know, the county's been, been supportive. And of course, now that, that uh, uh, George has installed uh, um, Pete McCart to help oversee things, he's, he's been a, a, a great proponent. Um, the county doesn't have a, a sort of a structural involvement right. in as much as, um, uh, the the CCA devolves to the lowest taxable entity, and like you know, one would think like, oh, just do it at the county and level, and, but that's right. not the way it's it's uh, constructed in the in the in the regulations. Uh, but th that said, you know, we we kind of look at the CCA as like this is just kind of a starting point, right? We're we're not done. There's a heck of a lot more to do. So. Um, uh, Lauren and Carmen mentioned, for example, like direct supply. This is like a huge concept to actually ship more green electrons into the constrained Westchester grid. And there are scenarios which say that like the county could play a, a larger role in that. Recently, uh, we've reconnected with, with Pete about, hey, you had that old uh, energy district or I forget what we called it. Um, that was a, a structure that was in place, but it was kind of dormant. You know, we might be able to use that as a vehicle uh, for advancing this. There's going to be new structures that happen in the future. And under some of those scenarios, the county could play a critical role in, in cutting some things free. I think, I think also because there will be, um, if we really, if we get to that point and we're really, um, bringing additionality, which is supporting the construction of new renewable facilities, there's gonna be a need for longer term contracts. So that may need an intermediary who's capable of doing that. You know, so lots of, it's, it's still in formation, but I, I think the county is gonna be an important piece. Uh, one question, um, Dan, uh, if you're, you're thinking of Calpusa as the organization? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's the name, that's the county like energy, it, it, it was, but it was disbanded in 2015. I don't know yeah. of any uh, county level organization that exists to do what you want to do at this time, but I, I think it'd be great if one could be created. 
Right, 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 right. What, what is what is this uh, you're referring to? This. Okay, there, there was there was previously an organization called the County of Westchester uh, Public Utility. Uh, let's see, C O W P U S A Public Utility something uh, Authority, nice. which um, which uh, I can't always remember all the acronyms. But which right. uh, it was used to buy power um, for uh, uh, the county itself uh, as a way to reduce the total cost. But um, that was uh, disbanded in 2015, and various other mechanisms were created uh, to try to do the same kind of thing. And once uh, ESCOs, the energy service companies, came into power uh, and to play, uh, they more or less uh, ate into the, uh, the business. Uh, and the New York Power Authority, which was providing the original power to Calpusa to redistribute to the individual communities in, in, the, in the Westchester County, um, that has sort of taken over uh, from Calpusa. And mm -hmm. what problem with Westchester County basically is that, um, not to belabor it, is that of course they get their power from the New York Power Authority, which is cheaper than anything that uh, CCA could ever provide. And mm -hmm. uh, that is a, a barrier to doing anything at the county level. So you have to sort of get through all that Michigan to get that working. Right. Now the other, you know, the other place where the county is playing a huge role is that they, they modeled uh, some work with NIPA for, uh, you know, the, your, your solar on your own facilities that we're now uh, copying and offering to the municipalities as another track for, for expanding their own uh, support for renewable energy construction. And uh, so that's been great. We're working with, with the county and, and Pete on that to, to try and, uh, you know, make that go forward. So there's lots of, lots of different roles uh, where we can collaborate. Well, uh, I mean, I'm brand new, well, relatively brand new to the county. So I'm, I'm still getting up to speed on a lot of things, but uh, I mean, definitely feel free to, to reach out to me uh, if, you know, if you just, you know, if you need to, uh, if you want to, you know, talk about additional ways the county can be involved, or you just you know, want to, you know, sort of a platform to amplify the the message, I'm happy to. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's happy great. to be you know, supportive. You know, seeing especially having seen, you know, in Peekskill where, uh, you know, how beneficial it's been. Yeah. Well, I mean, you the legislature is in a a great position to to help out with this because obviously, you know, you're coming with representation for the whole county and have uh, roots in your local areas. And um, I think in, you see all the amazing work that's going, going on locally. So it's, you know, how can we take all of this and add one plus one and make it four, you know, and accelerate things even faster than they're going now. That's, um, everybody's got a piece to play there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have a, have a role to play in this. And um, have you, are you, um... I mean, do you have a relationship with uh, with Legislator Barr? She chairs the um, Environmental Health Environment and and, uh, and Health Committee. Yeah, no, Nancy's been very supportive. Uh, we we do work with her. I know, especially my colleague Michelle Delfontaine, uh, is a local constituent, and they they uh, collaborate quite frequently on on brainstorming and ideas. So, uh, but we should do more of that. We, we should. But I mean, you know, I'm I'm definitely uh, available to you know help support any way I can. So fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for the for the presentation. Sure. Right. Would it be useful for Sustainable Westchester to give a presentation to the county legislators? Is that something that's happened before? I, I don't know. You can never have too much information, you know. In my view, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, you know that that sounds like a a, a good idea. Um, and I would, I would, uh, I would recommend, you know, to reach out to Legislator Nancy Barr. She chairs our Environment and Health yeah, Committee. Go through her for that. And uh, you know, she would be probably the best route to, uh, you know, maybe do like a committee, you know, a committee meeting where yeah, you guys come in and in front of her committee uh, a couple of times, you know, from visitor committee. But I think if uh, you know a session, not not you know overdone or anything, but a quick. Uh, you know, eight minute presentation to the full council at some convenient time would would be a great idea if that fits in. And uh, Lauren, great, great uh, thinking there. Yeah. Would there be, do you guys meet on Zoom or like would there be a meeting in the fall that perhaps we would go to? Our, well, our, our current, um, our current, you know, meeting schedule is still virtual. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't allow for in-person uh, meeting, but but 
you know, we have, uh, you know, we've been having committee meetings, you know, regularly and, uh, you know, presentations on a variety of uh, matters. Our next, um, I don't know, I don't know if the Board of Legislators uh, meeting is, is where it, you know, it would necessarily take place. It could potentially be a, uh, uh, maybe a cow meeting, you know, sort of like a, like a, like a work session, mm. but um, sure. Whatever. I would, yeah, re if, if you have a relationship with Nancy Barr, I would say, you know, maybe put Lauren in touch with her mm -hmm. and, you know, Lauren, just, you know, you know, share your ideas with her mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, figure what would be, you know, the, you know, the best way to, to do, you know, another, yeah, to, to find a way to do sort of a presentation to the entire uh, board if uh, we can do that. Sounds good. Okay, are there any other questions out there? Comments, concerns? Uh, this is uh, Patty speaking up again, if I could. Um, I just wanted to uh, maybe take off my 100 hat for a moment and speak as a resident. Um, so I'm one of these residents who, is sort of within the Croton um, jurisdiction, uh, but I'm, I'm actually in the town of Cortland. I'm in the 10520 uh, zip code and uh, I'm in the Croton school district, et cetera. But um, so because I'm outside the village of Croton, we do not have this uh, Westchester power uh, arrangement. And I know, uh, Dan, that you were working with uh, Leo Wegman on behalf of Croton 100, trying to get the town of Cortland to buy into the uh, Westchester power. And so I just wanted to, you know, really stress that that's incredibly important. And I think not only as a person from Croton 100, but as a resident of Cortland, uh, this is really something that Cortland should adopt. And uh, as individual users, we have opted into a uh, green energy uh, provider, but uh, this really should be something that the town of Cortland uh, buys into. Yeah, it's uh, really interesting because in many respects, Cortland has you know, has been very green and been out front and done a lot of uh, good things. Uh, but the over the past few years, they haven't been as tightly, um, you know, working together with us on on some certain initiatives, including the CCA. So we did uh, with uh, you know together with Leo, we've been kind of uh, uh, prodding and, and poking a little bit. And uh, working through Councilman, yikes, brain freeze. Uh, Crater or? Um, Creighton. Creighton. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Um, and, and toying with the idea of even a partial entry, which, you know, we'd rather not do. It's kind of uh, a little more troublesome, but, um, but it is conceivable under the regulations to have, you know, call it a neighborhood level participation, and that could be your 10520 zip code chunk of Cortland, and that could be a way for them to, you know, dip their uh, dip their toes in it. It could be, you know, it's a small enough area that we could really, um, if we could demonstrate a lot of local support for it, then they should, you know, I think there would be a level of comfort there that it's, uh, you know, there is there is always this. Um, this tension where it feels like something being imposed, even though, you know, we do our best to be, you know, fully transparent and, and provide all the mechanisms for people if they just don't feel it's the place for them to be, that they can opt out, all that kind of thing. But there are, you know, philosophical obstacles sometimes. And I feel like Cortland has a little bit of that um, in the dynamic. So this might be a way to start to, um, you know, break that down and give them a chance to feel comfortable with it. So uh, I'll, I'll get back to um, uh, Councilperson Creighton and, um, and nudge him again. You know, you know, there's, there's always some crisis on the, on the agenda that's uh, on a higher, higher priority. So it's, it's a matter of trying to uh, move things up in the visibility scale, you know. So we're, we're eager to, to get that going for sure. So I just wanted to add something, Patty. I think um, something very powerful that um, you as a resident, as well as other friends that you may have um, can do is probably write to your councilman and say, you know, express that you would like a program like Westchester Power within your communities. I think the more your um, leadership hears this, 
the more you'll be able to like, or the faster we'll be able to get um, Cortland to come into the CCA. There's kind of a chicken and egg, like we don't want to go in and sort of market independently of getting the council at least to the point where they're like, okay, you do some outreach just to let people know that we are considering this so we can start to have some feedback, you know? And I think we're at that stage where we'd love to have the council just say, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's interesting. Let's, let's see, you do, you know, do some presentations in, in that area. Uh, and, and, and we always know like when we're at that stage, we're not going in saying, oh, the town has decided to do this. You know, we start out with like, they're thinking about it. So you, you, we want you to just understand it and then you can be in a position to be part of the dialogue, you know? So hopefully we can move into that phase of things. And then at that point, definitely, you know, if, if we can get sort of a little bit of a local plebiscite going uh, where, where there's a clear indication, that would probably be very helpful, I think. Great, thank you. Um, it does feel like it's kind of stalled. So um, yeah. we'd yeah. really love to see a you know, jump start. Yeah, certainly if you, if you uh, know, know uh, Councilman Creighton or you know, have the ability to just maybe just message him a little bit. We understand you know, this is, you're trying to get this on the agenda and we just want you to know that uh, you, know, you have some support here and hope, hope uh, at least it could be taken up uh, and considered, you know, that, I think that would be fine. Okay, great. Good stuff. Okay, any other last questions, comments, concerns? Okay, well, if you think of something later, feel free to contact us. You have our email and a good thing to remember, info at sustainablewestchester.org. I've also put links if you have um, friends you'd like to encourage to come to our last two webinars. The link to those webinars is in the chat, as well as a link to our survey. Um, if you could take the survey for the webinar, we would really appreciate your feedback. And it looks like Legislator Smith just put his email in as well. Do you want us? Perfect. So we can follow up with you. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Happy. Great job. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye.